For a decade after the end of the Cold War, the world experienced a dramatic decline in the incidence and deadliness of armed conflict, particularly in Africa. If we take population size into account, Sub-Saharan Africa and the Middle East carry the largest conflict burden. Most of this violence occurs within and not between countries. Seven relationships explain the relatively high levels of internal armed conflict in Africa. The first is poverty. Internal armed violence is more frequent and poorer than in wealthier countries. More than one third of Africa's population still lives in extreme poverty. Poverty is exacerbated by inequality and inequality fuels violence. Transitions from autocracy to democracy or adverse regime changes are often prone to violence. A large democratic deficit translates into a risk of instability. In the Arab Spring countries, citizens' demand for democracy was vastly at odds with the actual supply. Africa's population is young. This is an advantage. But if young people lack opportunities and rates of urbanization are high, the risk of conflict increases. Once a country has experienced large-scale violence, the tendency towards repeat violence is strong. Being located in a conflict-ridden neighborhood increases the risk of experiencing instability. Rising global inequality and transnational terrorism add to the internal and regional drivers of conflict in Africa. Looking longer term, we also expect resource competition at a local level to trigger violence. Since 2010, violence in Africa has been on the rise. Contemporary African conflicts are increasingly fragmented, fought on a smaller scale and on the peripheries of states. More non-state actors are involved and insurgents are often divided. The spread of transnational organized crime, including terrorism, is often linked with local politics and criminal dynamics. Lower intensity conflict is becoming more prevalent. And since 2011, there has been a rise in social conflict, especially anti-government violence. Violence related to elections has also increased. Strong democracies are generally associated with greater peace. But democratization can trigger violence in the short and medium term. Violence at a community level has also increased. People compete over scarce livelihood resources such as land and water. The impact of climate change will aggravate this trend. Most conflicts include elements of support from neighboring countries, as borders are not controlled and rural areas not policed. The generally positive development outlook for Africa presents an unprecedented opportunity to ensure greater peace. Africa is likely to grow at an average annual rate of around 6% over the next 15 years, and incomes will continue to rise. This will steadily chip away at the structural drivers of conflict. As national incomes increase, states have more resources to deter, stop and prevent violence. Africans have an opportunity to shape their own future, but the quality and nature of governance is key. Poor governance, marginalization, lack of voice and accountability cut across many of the current conflict dynamics in Africa. We need to focus on building security, capacity and inclusion at all levels in our societies. To make development, stability and peace a reality in Africa will require concerted effort at national, regional and continental levels as well as the support of the United Nations. Connect with us online.